Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the cabin. It is a beautiful late June day here. Uh, today's forecast is sunny with a high of about 70 degrees. That's uh, about 20 degrees Celsius for you metric folks. And uh, yeah, it's just beautiful. Got a bit of a breeze blowing right now. Keeps the bugs down. Ah, oh, loving it. Anyways, uh, I was just uh, in the cabin and I was cleaning some stuff up and I was looking at some stuff that I found over the years around here. And some of it's kind of interesting. So, uh, you know, I thought it might make a good video topic. So I gathered it all up and said, hey, yeah, let's, uh, let's look at this stuff. And uh, some of the more interesting things I guess I found around here in the woods. So let's have a, have a look. All right, so here's the first item. So I was, uh, I was cutting wood here and I cut down this uh, maple tree years ago. And uh, I cut it up and as I was splitting it, I noticed something shiny, it caught my eye. And I said, what is that? And as I look closer, uh, you can see that it's actually a, um, a utensil embedded right in the middle of the tree. Um, now the best I can tell, that's probably a fork. I can't really see, but it doesn't look like a knife and it's probably not a spoon. Uh, what I'm guessing is somebody a long, long time ago was working in the woods and they probably were having their dinner, having a break, and they stuck their fork in the ground and forgot about it. And eventually this tree just grew up over the fork and uh, yeah, and I found it right in the middle of the uh, of the log. So I'm kind of glad I didn't cut into it with my chainsaw. As you can see, it was quite close. If I had to cut down a little lower, I probably would have hit it with the uh, with the chain and probably would have wrecked the chain. Anyway, uh, so that's kind of cool. So, and I know other people have found different types of things uh, in trees. Uh, another guy I know, he was cutting uh, maple along a river, and he he found a great big. Uh, he's cutting a big maple down, and there was actually a big sword uh, with Spanish writing on it uh, right in the middle of the tree. And this, this tree was huge, so it would probably been there for a long, long time. Anyways, and, uh, you know, you can look on on the Internet, and there's all kinds of pictures of everything from bicycles to, to whatever that uh, trees just kind of grow over. But that's kind of a neat little find. So, second item... Here's the second item. I found this. Uh, somebody must have dropped that a long, long time ago. It is in really bad shape. Uh, it's really nothing more than uh, rock now. The uh, uh, the trigger and the trigger guard are gone, but uh, somebody, yeah, somebody dropped that at one time and lost it. And, and uh, I found uh, what's left of it. Here's another one. Uh, so this is a, you can see the pieces of that are just falling off. But here's another one, um, you know, around gravel pits and, uh, and lakes are great areas to find stuff. Uh, so this is actually a piece of a petrified tree. So this is probably, oh, I don't know, uh, you know, last ice age, whatever, 10,000 plus years old. Kind of a neat little find. And here's another uh, fossil of some kind. Some kind of a tree or plant or something that uh, used to grow around here during the last probably ice age, I'm guessing. Found that in the gravel pit as well. And if anybody has, uh, you know, any ideas on any of this stuff, you know, definitely leave me some comments below. Let me know what you think. Because I have no idea what that could have been probably from. Right, so here's the next one. I found this. Now this is definitely uh, man-made. I can see the marks on it. It's uh, some kind of a tool, I'm guessing. Uh, it's actually very sharp. These, these edges, you can see they've been purposely uh, sharpened and... Man, I can tell you what, that's that's actually really, really sharp. Surprisingly sharp. So somebody made that at one time, a long, long time ago. 
and obviously used it for something in their day-to-day -day life, probably hunting or, or something. Something to do with hunting and probably... And that is sharp, yeah. Again, if anyone has any information on this or can uh, give me anything more on that, love to hear from you. Leave me some comments below. And then here, strange place to find stuff, but uh, these things, but this is a Bible. <laughs> Actually, I found two of them. And they, they were here in a, just in a, in a steel box. Um, I have no idea where they came from or how they got here or anything else, but uh, very cool. This one is very old. This one here is dated 1853, so a long, long time ago. And I left everything exactly as it is. But the thing about these old Bibles that are, is really cool, and it's not uh, it's not just uh, that they're old and it uh, has anything to do with religion, but it's the it's the stuff inside of the Bible that uh, is kind of cool. So if I can find some examples here, people cut out newspaper clippings and put in. Um, There were other stuff in here too. There's, all right. Yeah, so like people put in, I don't know, somebody at one time put in these uh, four leaf clovers that they found. I don't know how old they are. Could be 50 years, could be 150 years old. I have no idea. Different newspaper clippings and there's another piece of a plant. I don't know, somebody liked to put plants in this. There's quite a few leaves and plants and things in here. But, there's some more, there's another leaf, very old. The real treasure in these old Bibles are the, uh, the vital statistics. Um, because a lot of times, you know, the families had Bibles and they wrote down the births, the marriages, and the deaths, and the family record. And uh, in a lot of cases, the only way you know that these people ever existed is in these Bibles. Um, they didn't always get in the official government uh, records. So anyways, you can see, I suppose if you're into genealogy and stuff, if you knew who these people were, I mean, you can see the, the migration that uh, these people originally came from Scotland in September of 1830. And then you can see the migration because they came and they had their children uh, married in Restigouche. Restigouche is a county in New Brunswick, Canada. And then you can see on to Vermont in the United States in 1859. And some more births. And you can see uh, some in, uh, in Newcastle. That's kind of interesting. It says Chatham, America. Um, pretty sure Chatham and Newcastle are in New Brunswick, but <laughs> that's interesting. I see Nova Scotia, which is in Canada. Now my history is a little bit rusty. But I can't, I can't remember when Canada became a country. I don't, rem I don't know what year. My history is a little rusty there. Uh, mm, I'll have to look that up. But it's possible that the 1850s was before Canada was a country. Uh, anyway, so maybe that's why it says Chatham, America, Newcastle, America. Uh, I'm not really sure what they're referring to. Mm. And, yeah. Then some deaths. A lot of a lot of uh, children died back then. Ten days, eighty-three days, fifty days, nine years old, four years old. Yeah, geez, you know that's you know that's really sad, but that's the way it was back then. Yeah, you know it's uh, man, it's sad when you see all them all the deaths and stuff, but you know, of all the children and, and stuff like that. You know, people complain about health care today. But I'll, I'll tell you what, man, you step back in time 150, 200 years, and, 
and uh, see what healthcare was like back then because, you know, all the time you, you go to old cemeteries, it's the same thing. You just see, you know, so many children, you know, that, that died and, and mostly from disease. And so it, that today is, we don't even think about. Anyway, yeah, it's, it's real sad. Sometimes you, you know, one time I remember I was out, yeah, I was out hunting one time. I was out hunting and in the middle of nowhere in the woods, I saw this big rock about four, four feet by four feet and inscribed on it was here lies and it listened an entire family there was the, the mother the father and three kids and they were all buried there and uh, they all died within i think uh, a week or two of each other so obviously from disease or whatever the whatever hit them anyways it's real sad and it was it was tough times back then you know it's it's, it's nothing like today you know really uh we we've got it uh, we got it pretty good today and that's a fact. So, and finally, is this other Bible that was with it. Now, I think, I think this Bible was in World War I. And uh, the reason I think that is uh, when I looked in it, uh, the first thing I saw was uh, to Robert with Mother's Love, May 14th, 1918. So that was during World War I, and um, it was common practice for, you know, uh, a soldier or a young soldier to, to take a small Bible with them uh, to war. You know, sometimes that happened. You know, the families gave them a small Bible. And the other reason is, well, there's a picture of a, a very old picture of a, must be a pet deer. Anyway, um, the other reason I think this was in World War I Although it's really hard to to read this writing now. Uh, so I'm looking at it, something... Can't quite make that out. I think that might be uh, 104th Ammunition Train. Uh, I'm seeing like possibly serial numbers. Um, I don't know. I think these are... Obviously, I think these must be men in his unit. I can't make up some of these words. I think that might be... Is that Alabama? I'm not sure. Possibly not. I see some other writing here. Again, I'm seeing Newcastle. Can't quite make that out. I see some dates, uh, convalescent, uh, possibly somebody got injured, and what does that say, 15th of July, 1918, hospital, yeah, so I think this might have been in, Robert must have been a soldier in World War I, he probably took this Bible with him to war, uh, I have no idea what happened to Robert. I obviously long gone now, but I hope he made it home all right and hope he made it back to mother. Well, that's it, guys. That's some of the uh, some of the things that I found around here. Um, I found other things too. I just don't have them here. Some things come and go. You know what it is. It's hard to keep everything, but I found everything from old money to old bottles and you know everything in between. Kind of neat finding that stuff. I love the uh, I love that kind of thing. Um, you know, you can find some neat stuff. Sometimes if you're out in the woods, you can find little, you know, because nobody had a dump back then, so you might find an old, like, uh, homestead that was abandoned a long, long time ago, for example. And if there's a, you know, a lot of times what they did was they had one place where they dumped all of their, all of their garbage, uh, not like garbage that we have today, but they dumped a lot of stuff. There would be old bottles and. You know, you find old stuff like that. Lots of old, interesting things. So you find those things. Uh, so that's what I found, some of the stuff I found. Uh, if anybody has any information on any of the things that I found, um, definitely leave me some comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you guys have found anything cool and interesting out in the woods, um, drop me some comments below. Let me know what it is. I love reading those stories. Or just leave me some comments about anything. I just love reading the comments. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you very much for joining me today. 
beautiful day here at the cabin. I'm going to get on with my day. Hope you guys have a great day. Uh, if you're new, subscribe. Hit the little bell icon if you want to be notified of new videos. Uh, if you don't mind, give me a thumbs up because I appreciate that support. And uh, we'll see you real soon back here at the cabin.